Hey Noble Ones, welcome to Metrodance Academy, the channel where we explore how to learn languages in the most fun and effective way possible. So, uh, as you know, I used to teach English, I used to teach Japanese, and I used to teach a wide range of different students, from children to high school uh, students, all the way up to university and also professional and adults. And I was going through my career as a language teacher, I also started working as a professional examiner uh, for City and Guilds of London, which allowed me to have access to a lot of tests and test results. So one of the things I did was to sort of put together a comprehensive data analysis of all the most common mistakes made by people coming from a Romance language basis. So these tend to be overlappable between people uh, of different European countries, whether it be French speaking, uh, Spanish speaking, Italian speaking, and also of course Latin America, French Canada. And I created a list of the most common mistakes that statistically were occurring. And then I used this list to prepare lessons in order to help my students not make these mistakes, which were the most likely. So today I want to share this list with you. And the first mistake we're going to look at is the capital letter mistake. Now, of course, this is something that has to do with the written form of the language and proficiency thereof. But one of the main differences between, for example, Italian as a language and English is the fact that we don't always capitalize the same way. And this might sound strange because at the end of the day you might think, well, okay, if there is a full stop, the next letter is going to be capital. And yeah, of course, we, we all do that. But for example, did you know, even though in English the pronoun I, when I say I like this, I go to work every morning, that I is always capital. You never, no matter where it is in the sentence, you never write it as a lowercase I. Well, in Italian you do. So in Italian when you write io, which is the, of course, first singular pronoun, io amo la pasta, io sono italiano. That io is only capitalized when it's following a full stop or a period. But if it's in the middle of the sentence, in the middle of a phrase, uh, it's never capital. You just write it lowercase. Hence, Italians tend to apply that same rule, that same logic into English. But it's nice to know. So that's the first problem. Still remaining in the realm of capitalization, one thing that happens is that, of course, in English, the days of the week should always be written capital. Friday, Saturday, Monday. That's not the case in Italian. And as far as I know, it's not the case in Spanish or French either. Which means that, of course, Italians are never gonna cap it unless you tell them, as they are writing their letter and their essay in English, they are going to write Friday with a lowercase letter. That's gonna be a mistake. It's gonna take points during a test, particularly if it's a proficiency level test, like international exams, and therefore they need to be prepared. Always capital when you write Friday or Saturday etc. The last one which has to do with capitalization that we do differently is in English, if you're writing the word English, Italian, French, Spanish, all of these are capitalized, whether you're using it to mean the language, the people, or even if you're just using them as an adjective, French cuisine, the F still capital, not the case in Italian. Uh, if you say parlo italiano, the I in italiano, lowercase. If you want to say voglio imparare l'inglese, I want to learn English. Inglese, the I, lowercase. Therefore, you guys can expect a lot of Italian students, they lowercase everything. The next problem, we use our hands too much. So whenever we speak English, we do this and this is a problem during tests. I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, but it's not a problem. I never learned this one, never will. I always use my hands. Another one that is kind of fun is how we use the article. And here, I kind of want to speak a little bit more in general terms. The way English uses the article, the, is actually quite unique in the sense that an Asian speaker, I'm generalizing here, but usually will tend to not use enough articles and they'll drop the the because they don't use them in their languages. An Italian speaker, however, will overuse articles and will put the everywhere because we use articles a lot more in our language than you people do in English. And also we have a lot of articles. I mean, you guys have the, and we have il, lo, la, il, gli, le. Yeah, I don't know, don't ask. Okay, so let me give you an example. This is something I used to teach my students a lot. So when you say a sentence such as, in English, such as, I like cats. So you're talking about cats in general. You don't put the article. But if you talk about a specific cat, I like the cat my cousin bought in London, then you do put the article because you're not talking about the category, you're talking about a specific cat. In Italian, it doesn't matter. You put the article anyways. So when you speak Italian, you say mi piacciono i gatti. I like the cats. And that's how we speak. Therefore, that's what Italians tend to do. They will add the article uh, because that's what we do in, in Italian. So Italian speakers who are not 
very fluent in English or still haven't mastered the structure, uh, the syntax, uh, they will say, oh, I really like the pizza. I love the red cars. Or if they're really beginners, they'll say, I like the cars red, because we tend to put adjectives after nouns. Usually, not always. Make a dedicated video. But now I'd like to take a moment to mention the kind sponsor that made this video possible, Link. Link is a language app that lets you learn from the content you love, focusing on input, namely reading and listening in your target language. The app has been recently redesigned. It comes with thousands of hours of content that includes audio and text. And of course, you can also look up words and phrases. You can import content from YouTube, Netflix, blogs, news, and much more. So you can use Link to build your own library and get fluent using content you love. Which is what I always advocate on this channel, I mean at the end of the day that's my intro. But Link has a lot of other positive aspects, for example you've got a plethora of languages to choose from, and when it comes to my own experience I've been using Link to brush up my Japanese and to reach fluency in Mandarin. So my focus on the app has been more intense for Mandarin, I have to say, impressive. Link also tracks your statistics, it's available on mobile, and it was co-founded by Steve Kaufman, pretty sure every one of you already know who Kaufman is. Much respect. Another major update when it comes to Link is the integration of Whisper AI into Link. Now, this is a massive one because it allows users to generate text from any audio file, including podcasts and audiobooks. This new feature enhances tremendously the user's experience as it gives you even more content to choose to learn from. Now, if you are considering giving Link a try, absolutely click the link in the description box and you will get a 35% discount by using my link. And big thanks to Link for sponsoring my channel. Now what's interesting about the article is another situation where Italian and English approach this situation differently, which I think is really fascinating, is with countries. So when I'm teaching my students, it's really funny. I remember teaching these lessons uh, out of experience, really. I, kind of already, I could already predict their reactions. And I would say, so guys, don't use the article in English when you're using a proper name or, or the proper name of a country. So don't say the England, the France, I'm going to the Portugal, don't do that. Even though when it's the subject of the sentence we do do it in Italian, we say the Italy is a beautiful country, l'Italia è un bel paese. I like the France, mi piace la Francia. That's how we say it in our language and therefore beginner students will tend to do that in English too. So I try to explain to them, so don't use it when you're speaking English. Here's the problem. There are exceptions in English and I needed to kind of prepare them for it and something that perhaps you, if, you, if you're very fluent in English or if English is your first language, you know what I'm about to say, you use it, but perhaps you never really thought about it. You don't say, I want to go to the England, but you do say, I want to go to the UK. You don't say, I want to go to the America, but you do say, I want to go to the United States. And that is because United States, United Kingdom, the Netherlands, these are all common nouns as opposed to proper nouns. So little exception in there. But even with the proper noun situation, when you're like, yeah, okay, but it's not difficult to, to remember, just don't say the England or the America. There is a situation where you would. Let me show you. Look at the sentence. This is not the England I used to know. This is not the America I used to know. As you can see, deep subject. Perhaps I should make a dedicated video, but yes, articles can be a problem and you need to prepare your students for it. For instance, I saw the Queen, but I saw Queen Elizabeth. You don't say I saw the Queen Elizabeth, because you place the name. In Italian, just put the article everywhere. Model verbs is another one. So there is, for those who don't know, there is a category of verbs in English which are considered, which are called modal, and that is because they, they have the kind of their own special rules. It's usually nine, depending on the book. Some examples are the verb can, will, must, could, would, should, all of these are considered modal verbs. Now, what's interesting about modal verbs is that they act in a little bit of a weird way, which, once again, you might have not noticed if you are very fluent or you are a native speaker, but as an Italian who's learning English, these can be a freaking nightmare. For instance, in English, you can say, I want to study English, but you can't say, I can to study English. And the reason is because can is modal, and so it's its own little family and they conjugate differently. Well, in Italian, that's not the case. So I remember the student asking me once, uh, how do you say, uh, voglio studiare inglese? And I told him, I want to study English. And he was like, oh, great. And then we spoke a little more and he goes, I can to study English. I'm like, no, 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 wait, you can't put to. He's like, but you said I could. I'm like, yeah, but that was, that was a different verb. Oh my gosh. Here's another one and it's ED. So when you are 
teaching people how to create the simple past and the uh, past tense in English, such as like present perfect, you're teaching them how to conjugate irregular verbs. You know, that's the big thing because you normally have to spend a lot of time teaching them how to, to uh, you know, to memorize the irregular verbs, right? So go, went, gone and all that kind of stuff. But regular verbs, when you're like, it's easy, just add ed at the end of a verb. Well, easy and not really sure because then if you just tell your students that, and again, this comes from experience, you tell your students if it's a regular verb and you need to speak in the past tense just add ed what's going to happen is this i wanted a car i washed a car i kissed a girl of course this one has more to do with the way you pronounce things rather than the way you write a language uh, but it's important to also tackle this and explain to romance speakers that yes you spell it ed but English is nuts when it comes to spelling, so the way you pronounce the ED will strongly depend and will be influenced by the letter that precedes the E. For instance, in the word kissed, you pronounce ED as a T. <laughs> Just freaking spell it T. But yeah, you pronounce it like a T because there is an S. Wash, there is S-H, sh sound, so washed. Walk, walked, etc. So it depends on the letter. But if there is a T, you fully pronounce ed, so wanted is correct. No one says wanted. <laughs> and after you've told them this, it's great, but then they will say something like, also, oh, I don't say praised, I say praised. And I'm like, uh, actually, no, that's praised. So there is a third option. Welcome to English. Anyways, I thought there was a fun thing to share with you because perhaps you are learning English and maybe you did make some of these mistakes and this list might have helped. And then if you are instead a native English speaker, uh, perhaps it was just fun to think about it, stop for a second and be like, yeah, that's right, I never noticed that. I hope you enjoyed it. There is much more to speak. Uh, and of course, the list is a lot longer than this. So if you enjoyed it, I'll make an episode 2, 3, 15. It's all up to you. Thank you so much for joining Metatron's Academy.